You are tracking calories, training consistently, and making sure you are in a calorie deficit. At the start of this process, you are seeing great results. But after a month or two, you reach a plateau. This is a common scenario, and it has led many people to believe that a calorie deficit only works temporarily. And in some way, they have a point. A calorie deficit is related to the theory of calories in versus calories out. If you consume fewer calories than you burn in a day, your body mostly burns fat to compensate for the energy deficit. Now, most people do a good job in making sure that their calories in are consistent. So if you need to eat 2000 calories per day, by tracking calories or controlling your portions, you can make sure you eat a consistent 2000 calories daily. However, the interesting part about maintaining a calorie deficit is that your calories out, or how many calories you burn per day, is quite dynamic. While at the start of your fat loss phase, your body may burn 2500 calories per day, in about two months from now, this could be down to 2000 calories per day. There is research on this topic too. In one study, it was found that after two months of maintaining a calorie deficit, daily energy expenditure dropped by an average of 15%. This is a big reason why some people stop losing fat even when they think they are in a calorie deficit. The initial calorie intake that places you in a calorie deficit will no longer be an actual deficit a few months from now. So it is not that a calorie deficit stops working, but what's needed to be in a calorie deficit changes over time. To better understand why this adaptation in your metabolism happens, let's look into the four components of human energy expenditure. Your body's daily calorie burn can be divided into four main categories. The first and biggest component is your resting metabolic rate. About 60% of your calorie burn comes from simply existing. This is the number of calories your body burns to keep organs functioning, including your brain. So processing the information that I am sharing with you now actually helps you burn some calories. The second component of energy expenditure is the thermic effect of food. When you consume food, your body burns calories to process and digest nutrients. About 10% of your daily energy expenditure comes from the thermic effect of food. The third component is the most variable one and that is your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Or in simple terms, your spontaneous activity. Spontaneous activity can be between 15 to 40% of your daily energy expenditure, dependent on how active you are throughout the day. Your spontaneous activity refers to the calories burned with movements you do that is not deliberate training. So think about walking stairs, fidgeting at your desk, and whenever you walk towards your couch to watch the new I Wanna Burn Fat video. And any calorie deficit, especially your spontaneous activity tends to be impacted. I will give more information on this in a minute. The fourth and final component of energy expenditure is exercise activity thermogenesis, and this refers to how many calories you burn with your deliberate workouts. Exercise activity thermogenesis ends up being around 15 to 30% of your daily calorie burn. In a simplified version of calories in versus calories out, you simply calculate how many calories you burn on a daily basis, eat below that, and watch yourself become shredded, flexing on everyone on the beach. However, this is the key of today's video. Your calorie intake has a direct impact on how many calories you burn. Literally every component of your energy expenditure is impacted when you are in a calorie deficit. When you eat fewer calories than your body requires, you start burning some fat, which also reduces the metabolically active tissue in your body. Believe it or not, carrying fat makes you burn more calories. Also, because you're now consuming fewer calories, your body starts wanting to burn fewer calories at rest. This decrease in metabolic rate is a protective mechanism known as adaptive thermogenesis in nutritional sciences. But next to the metabolic rate, also your thermic effect of food changes. Just think about it, if you're eating 2000 calories instead of 2500 calories, your body has less food and nutrients to digest. So your calorie burn from the thermic effect of food is lower. The number of calories burned in training are now also decreased. Let's say you lost 10 pounds in two months. Whenever you now lift weights or do cardio, you burn fewer calories because your body is more efficient. And lastly, but most importantly, when you are in a calorie deficit, your spontaneous activity tends to drop. Over and over and over again, we see in the research that your body likes to preserve energy in a calorie deficit by making you less physically active. And this happens in subtle ways. Let's say you alternate between standing and sitting during your working hours. You might find yourself getting tired faster while standing and will spend more time sitting. It's the small actions throughout the day that make a difference here. But the difference is quite big if you consider that spontaneous activity occurs throughout the entirety of your waking day. One study found that a change in spontaneous activity can result in burning about 500 calories less per day. So as you can imagine, the changes in your daily energy expenditure will have a big impact on how your fat loss phase develops over time. Calories in versus calories out is not broken. The laws of thermodynamics apply. 
but we need to consider that energy balance is dynamic, so to stay in a calorie deficit, your approach needs to adapt over time. And there are some proactive tips that I would like to share with you to reduce the extent at which metabolic adaptations occur throughout your fat loss phase, so you won't find yourself having to decrease calorie intake every couple of weeks. I use these tips with my online coaching clients as well, and it definitely reduces the frequency at which we have to decrease calories or do more cardio to stay in a calorie deficit. First, prioritize lifting weights to maintain muscle. Research consistently shows that maintaining muscle helps with better preserving metabolic rate while in a deficit. The more muscle you carry, the more calories your body has to burn at rest, so you better preserve your metabolic rate. Secondly, maintain an elevated protein intake. Protein has a higher thermic effect of food. For every 100 calories you consume of pure protein, your body burns about 20 to 30 calories to digest it. While with carbs and fats, the thermic effect is between 3 to 10 calories per 100 calories consumed. So having a bigger percentage of your calorie intake coming from protein will help you minimize the decrease in calorie burn that comes from having a lower thermic effect of food in a calorie deficit. Thirdly, be aware that your body likes to be more lazy while in a deficit. If you eat less, your body also likes the idea of moving less. From a survival point of view, this makes sense, but for fat loss, it's not that beneficial. So keep your body moving, purposely go on more walks and do fun activities that involve you moving in a low stress way. When applying these proactive tips, you will find that your initial calorie deficit will work well for quite some time. Of course, we still want to stay adaptable. It is perfectly normal if after two to three months of maintaining a calorie deficit, you have to dig deeper to get the desired result. But remember, that's not because a calorie deficit stops working, it's simply because your calorie burn changes over time. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a better understanding about why your fat loss approach may stop working at some point and how to manage it. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next one.